Okay, so next up we want to get the data and uh, deserialize it into our classes in our model. Uh, however, to do that, we're going to need to make a call out to Marvel, and to do that, we're going to need to figure out how to make an MD5 hash. And I'm not going to lie to you, I have no idea. I wouldn't have been able to figure this out had not somebody posted some code online. That's the beauty of learning software development in 2015, 16, as opposed to learning it back when I did before the internet, uh, if you can even imagine such a thing. Okay, uh, but at any rate, I can show you where I found the answer, and if you want some more information about it, I'd be happy to point to that, uh, point to, the, to, to there. So let's get started by um, kind of outlining what it is that we need to do in our get character list. Uh, we're going to need to assemble the, uh, the URL that we want to call, and part of that's going to be making a call to get the uh, MD5 uh, hash. And then we're going to make a call out to Marvel, and we're going to get back a response, and we're going to need to get that response into a string. So response to string, and that string will represent JSON. And then we want to deserialize that, right? And if you recall the way that we deserialize data, uh, that JSON data is to use the um, the data contract JSON serializer, right? Okay. All right. So uh, that's going to be a little bit tricky, and we're just going to need to work our way through it. So uh, assembling the URL will be pretty easy. We're going to come back here to their interactive um, API documentation. And we're going to rerun the sort of query that we expect to do. Like we want to limit to 10, and we'll just give a random offset of like 100, right? And we'll click try it out. And that should give us the request URL format that we need to work with. Um, and what we want is this request URL. I'm just going to highlight it and copy it, and then go back here and we're going to create a string URL equals string dot format and then we will paste in that that long URL now this is a good time for me to make some more room here alright what we're going to do is we're going to hard code it to 10 uh, if you wanted to you could make and replace that value to grab 15, 20, 100, whatever you wanted. We are going to, however, change the offset. We're going to change the API key as well. And then we will append on to the end of this the hash as well when we get to that point. All right, so um, the first thing we'll need to do is to create an instance of random. And we're going to uh, get a new offset. Now, I happen to know that there are 1,500 characters. I'm going to hard code it now, but I probably should put this in a constant at some point. So um, let's call this um, var offset equals random.next. And I want to give the, the, uh, the max value of 1,500. And once I have that offset value, I can provide that there. The next thing that I'm going to need to do is provide the API key. And so what I'm going to do for that is actually create a couple of private constants. So private const string private key equals and then you know, private const string public equals all right and then um, here I'm also going to just create one for this private const int max characters equals 1500 and we'll just do max characters all right and then we'll put the public key here all right, and then the next thing we're going to need to do is actually populate that private and public key. Uh, this is where we get up close and personal here with my 
personal information. However, I'm going to remove my account once I'm finished recording this series. Uh, so this key will not work. Get your own. Don't try to copy mine. Put the public key in the public key spot. And we'll put the private key in the private key spot. And the next thing we're going to need to do is actually get the MD5 hash. And so here's what I do know. Um, what I can do is I'm going to need to create a private static method that will return a string called create hash. And what this will do, let's um, let's uh, do var to be hashed equals. Um, we'll need a timestamp, and we're going to need a private key, and we're going to need the public key. And we're going to concatenate those three things together. So for a timestamp. Um, if you take a look at the documentation, again, in that how-to area under authorization, it says that for the timestamp, you can use any long string which can change on a request-by-request requ request basis. So it, you don't have to get crazy with this. I'm just going to use daytime.now.ticks, which should give us a pretty unique string of characters uh, representing how many milliseconds since a certain date in the past. Uh, so we'll call var timestamp equals date time dot now dot ticks dot to string and that should work. Okay. Then next up what I need to do is actually get the computed hash. Now this is where I have no idea how to do this had it not been for somebody on the glorious internets who already figured this out and was kind enough to post it in response to a question on Stack Overflow. So I give you the URL where you can see where this was originally sourced from. I basically spent about three days trying to learn how to create my own um, hash and I learned a lot uh, but ultimately at the end I was unsuccessful of actually creating one that worked. So uh, I just stole five lines of code that this kind soul uh, posted out on the internet. I'm just going to make sure all the references are added with using statements here. And what I'd recommend you do if you really want to learn how all this works, there's probably some good content out on um, Microsoft uh, um, Virtual Academy about um, security. Probably some good books out there. Obviously, you could go and look at each of these objects and each of these methods out on MSDN to learn a little bit more about what they do and how they work. But at the end of the day, all I really care about is that I want to pass in a value to be computed as an MD5 hash, and what I get back is an MD5 hash. All right. So, um, var hashed message equals compute MD5. And I'm going to pass in the to be hashed, and then I'm going to return the hashed message, like so. Okay, so here we're going to get that hash. So var hash equals um, create hash. And what I want to do is uh, append to that existing URL so uh, the, the the hashed value and the uh, yeah just the hash value and the timestamp because it should have everything else it needs so um, I'm gonna go string uh, I could guess I could do this in a number of different ways let's just go ahead and do this all in one shot actually I changed my mind all right so we'll do that first and then we'll create the URL. At the very end of this URL, I'm going to have to add in a timestamp equals, uh, and we'll substitute that in, and then also the hash itself equals. All right. And so um, I guess I need to pass in the timestamp in order to get at it, unfortunately. So I need to change this just a little bit um, string timestamp. And then I'll pass that in, but I'll have access to it here, and then I'll be able to pass it in here. Timestamp, great. Okay. 
All right, next up, I'm going to use the HTTP uh, client called HTTP, and I need to add a using statement for it. So I'm adding using .net or system .net .http equals new HTTP client, and that'll allow us to um, do this HTTP .get async passing in the request URI, so give it the URL. And what I should get back from that, and it's a waitable, what I should get back from it is a response. And that response will be of type um, HTTP response message. Now you notice to get the red squiggly, that's because I have to go through this little dance here and add the async keyword, and I think that's all I need to do right now. We'll come back to that in a minute. All right, so here we go. We got the response, uh, and now with that response, what I need to do is read it into a string. So var JSON message equals response dot content. Whoops, content dot read as string async. That'll give me back just the JSON message. Now I have it in hand, and since this is an async, I'm going to have to make it awaitable. Now I need to take that JSON and I need to deserialize it into my classes. And to do this, I'm going to use the data contract JSON serializer, right? And we should already have that reference in our project. I'm just going to hit control period and add the using system.runtime.serialization.json namespace. That should get it recognize there and I'm going to create a serializer which is really just a new data contract JSON serializer and specifically the type is going to be this character data wrapper Oops, cara, uh, character data wrapper. Now why isn't it seeing it? Because I haven't added using statement for models. So using hero explorer dot models should resolve that reference. And then uh, I need a memory stream. So whoops, ms for memory stream. So memory stream. Let's make sure we add the using statement for that system dot io. And the idea here is that uh, we're going to pile a bunch of stuff in a memory stream and the memory stream will sit there holding on to stuff and then the serial will give it to the serializer the serializer will suck all the stuff out of that straw and it will deserialize it and give it back to us as a um, as an object graph uh, beginning at the root with character data wrapper alright so uh, we have to start out with encoding dot utf8 which is what we would expect that JSON to be in and then we're gonna say get the bytes out and basically just take that string that we got here that JSON message and then turn it to an array of bytes based on the UTF-8 encoding and then put that all up in a memory stream and this should be new memory stream like so alrighty and then if we've done everything right which is a big if we're gonna read the object that's sitting there in that memory stream and we're going to uh, read it into a um, var uh, result and what we'll do here is go um, what should be brought back to us is a character data wrapper object if we did that right okay and we need that now um, we probably, in order to get this to work, what we're going to need to do is actually return a task of character data wrapper, and so we'll want to return the result here. And why is everybody not happy? Oh, because we got you rid of the void. All right, everything looks good. Everybody happy? Good. Build the solution.
Okay, great, that worked. Uh, the next thing that we're going to need to do is now, let's see, in our main page .xaml, I'm just going to add a button, and when we click it, we'll kick off this whole process. I just want to see if it's bringing data back. Once we get data and we get it deserialized, then we can move on with the user interface. But in the meantime, all I really want to do is just to make sure that we can get that far. And so we want to make a call into the marble facade dot whoops, why don't I see uh, public says, oh, because I wanted this to be static. All right. And I wanted it static so I didn't have to create an instance of Marvel facade. I mean, all this is really doing is just bringing me back something it doesn't need. I don't need to have a reference to it. It doesn't have any, like, state, you know. All right, and so that should work there. Var, um, let's call it data equals that. That's all I really need to do. Okay. So let me put a breakpoint at a spot where I know, whoops, spot where I'm concerned about. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident everything will work. I'm a little concerned about this right here. And um, I can't explain why. <laughs> let's, just, let's just see if this will work. If we do hit a problem, it's probably a mismatch between the JSON that's being returned for the items that we want to uh, work with. Well, I got a tiny button here, but this should work. A mismatch between uh, the data types and the JSON. So I'm going to have to like you know put my thinking cap on and figure that part out. We haven't hit the breakpoint just yet, and we haven't hit an exception. So it's really thinking about this. Okay, so far so good. Let's take a look at that URL. Can't see it off to the right hand side of the screen, but it looks legit. Looks legit. All right, so let's keep going here and see what happens. So we made our request, we got it back, and now we're gonna create our serializer and our memory stream, and here's where I'm nervous. And hey, uh, it actually worked. Oh yeah, there's a 10 results. Let's drill into one of these guys. Frankenstein's monster. Here, I want you to see what I'm gonna do next. I'm very happy about this, okay? So um, great, we got data back from the Marble API. I am so excited about that, that it worked on the first try. <laughs> okay, so um, we're gonna pick it back up here in the next lesson, and then we should be able to bind to that data and start showing stuff on screen. That's gonna be exciting. We'll see you in the next lesson, thanks.